So these pictures are all edited. And you're probably thinking, okay, those look pretty good, right? But let me show you where they all started, okay? Let me go ahead and reset. And then I'm gonna start to clear out the masks. So let me come here to the mask tool and I'm just gonna throw all these masks away. So delete. And see, there's the ramp, the foreground, the sky, right? Well, what's cool here is that these masks can all be applied very easily to an image and we can edit. So when you open up an image in Lightroom or in Photoshop as a raw file, there's a new masking panel. And so this has subject, sky, and background. Well, let's start with sky. I click, it adds the sky. Now, separately, I can recover the sky and play with things like the black and white point. Let's put a little bit of sharpness in the sky and bring out the clarity for the clouds. Then you just, I suggest naming this. Then you click on the more menu and you say duplicate and invert. And it flips it the other way. And I'll call this foreground. And now you can separately adjust that. So I could brighten up the foreground, for example, and play with the highlights or shadows to create a better transition zone there so we don't get that glow at the edge. And then, there we go. Then using these adjustments here, you can be super particular. And it really lets you go in and refine. See? So you can make some great global adjustments here to the image very quickly. And besides those options here to select foreground and sky, you have other mask controls. So you can come here to the masking tab and say that you want to make another mask. This time, I'm gonna select a linear gradient and just click and drag across the foreground here, like so, and use that to darken that foreground a little bit. Or add another mask, and make a luminance range selection and click on the waterfall. Then you can subtract. And so you can actually come in here and set the target for what's going to be selected. There we go. And then it's super simple to subtract. And I could say subtract with the brush and just paint out the sky. And so you can be really precise here. And for example, I just targeted the waterfall itself. There we go. And then using the range there, again, you can come back and click on something and fine tune it as needed. So I could brighten the waterfall and remove some of the color cast from it. Does that make sense? Now we're gonna do more, but let me know that that's actually understandable. Like these masks let you target specific areas very precisely. Uh, Ken, if you wanna put that into the Q&A, that'd be great and I can answer it. But uh, that just lets you make a really good selection. So for example, let's do this one. And we'll reset, delete mask. And all I have to do is say, select the sky and basically develop the sky. Dial in the contrast ratio you want. And I'm gonna put more texture in there to bring those clouds out. And then I'll do a little bit of colorization here 
and roll towards the blue. I could adjust the temperature or the tint, right? Then invert it, duplicate and invert. And now you can go to town on the other part, right? The key here is to look at the edges. So if you start to see a glow around the object, look at that and then play with things like dehaze, which is useful to sort of light wrap the shadow around the edge there. And look at your highlights shadow slider and use that to just adjust the edge a little bit and you can really clean that up. Okay, cool. So yeah, and Ken, you're right, you can combine these. So you can use one mask and add another to it, which is really quite powerful. And so, you know, that's what I did here. Let's go ahead and reset. So we can say things like select the subject and it shows the flower. And then I can say add and select objects and just paintbrush on this guy. Give it a few strokes and it analyzes, right? So like you can brush over that and keep adding onto the object there and it will actually detect the edges for you. There we go. See, and it masked it. So it's kind of cool and you could just combine, hey, add with the brush and I could get a smaller brush and just paint in a little bit more. The blue circle is just highlighting my cursor, guys. So it's the white circle. That's the Lightroom brush. Option for subtract. And we could just subtract a little bit there with the brush. So it's really kind of cool. Then I could adjust just those guys. Right? Like recover that, come down to texture and really improve the, the detail there. There we go. See a little clarity, right? And then some sharpness. And then you can invert that mask and go the other way. And for example, I can unsharpen the background more and put in a little bit of negative clarity to soften the background up even more and soften those colors and then maybe darken the background just a little bit. So it pulls away from the subject. So you can use that to create a great separation, okay? Now we are, you, you mentioned the Refine Edge tool, Ken. We're gonna talk about that in Photoshop here in just a second. Uh, Photoshop certainly has some power, but do you guys see what this can do to your raw files? So being able, for example, to separately warm up the foreground, and cool the background, right? Look at that. I just adjusted the color temperature, warming the foreground and cooling the background, right? Like I just, I went the opposite direction. That's split toning. So when you warm and cool the separate zones independently, you can actually create better dynamic range or contrast, which really helps the subject cut through. So that was split toning there, foreground to background. Or here, did a whole bunch of masks based on luminosity, right? Targeted the light, targeted the shadows, targeted the edges and darkened them down a little bit and then put a gentle gradient across the top to darken the shadow, allowing us to just fine tune that edit a bit and bring out some of the hidden details. Because I couldn't do a long exposure here because the carousel was moving so quickly. So that was a four second exposure already. And if I had done much more, people would have been totally blurry and it had been really hard to see them. So this kind of let me get the best of both. All right, cool. So let's do a person adjustment here and then we'll do some Photoshop adjustments. So here we go. Let's talk about a person first. So under the selection tools here, let me delete all the masks. There we go. Okay. You have 
a really cool option that's very hidden. It's down here under people. And you're like, oh, that's the whole person, cool. But if you click, it's actually better than that. This is so hidden. Like I missed it the first few times I used it, right? So what you wanna do is actually click on the person and it opens up a whole nother set of tools. So now we can target things. So for example, target the lips, create a mask. And now a little more saturation in the lips, right? And I can recover this. Then I'll go back to the person here and add another mask and say person again. And this time, choose the eyebrows. And I want to create a mask and add a little bit of texture to the eyebrows and some clarity, All right? See how it's adjusting the thickness of the brow with the clarity slider there? So a little bit thicker or a little bit minimized, depending upon how your subject feels about their eyebrows. Then we'll keep going and go back to people and do the face skin and the body skin. That's good. Create. And what I can do here, looking at that, is a little bit of improvement. Now, this is where Radiant is going to help in a second to smooth out the skin a bit. But looking at his skin, if I needed to, I can make some subtle adjustments here, right? Maybe slightly underexpose and just warm up the skin color temperature just a little bit, right? So it's so amazing how precise you can be. Let's go ahead and target. Here's a technical word for you. The eye scalea, which is in other words of saying the whites of the eyes and the iris and pupils. Create. Let's brighten those a little bit and push the white point. Now that's too far, but you see how we could bring that up. And then looking at that, that's cool. Yep, that definitely worked. So we were able to make some very targeted adjustments and then create a new mask, select people. Let's do the whole person, create, and we're gonna invert it now, invert. And now what I can do is darken the backdrop a little bit and further defocus it, negative sharpness, and a little bit of negative clarity. And I blurred the background more. So now let's take a look here at the before and after. You could see what a set of targeted adjustments we did. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open that as a smart object and click okay. Open the object, sends it over and I am free to use a plugin like Radiant as a smart object. It's gonna target it, it found it. I like the improvements. Looking at the face adjustment here, let's check out his skin. And I think the that part's okay, but let's do some skin smoothing here. There we go. Just a gentle, subtle smoothness on the skin and remove some of the blemishes. Good, tone those down and get rid of the dark circles under the eyes. Good, and a little bit of eye enhance for some sharpness. Click apply and it hands it back off. And then what Ken was mentioning is Photoshop has some of its own selection commands. So you'll see things like select, subject, right? And it's going to attempt to select the subject. Then you can click the selection menu here and choose select and mask. And it has a great command here called refine edge. So you can actually adjust it there and kind of see what it looks like. 
you can actually view the mask, for example. And with smart radius there, that cleans it up. Then what you could do is grab this edge aware brush and you can actually paint right along the hair. And so when you paint along the hairline here, it will actually analyze the hair and create a better transition there right along where the hair meets the background. Cool. Click OK. And it outputs it as a selection. So now you're free to add things like a targeted adjustment if I just wanted to bring up the color there on our subject. See? Or reload that, add another adjustment, and add a curves adjustment, or actually let's do exposure adjustment. But this time, let's do that again. Command click to load, select inverse, and add the exposure adjustment. And I could just further darken the background. There we go. Right about there is pretty good. So notice how you can really separate things. By the way, if you've got something like a logo on a shirt here, here's a cool little trick. Make a new empty layer, grab your healing brush tool. In this case, I'll use the regular healing brush and tell it to sample all layers. Now what you can do is option click to set your sample point and brush over the problem area. And when you let go, it heals it to its own layer. So you don't have to get rid of the layered file. You could still have all those masks and selections down below. And I was able to take out the logo on his shirt. And if there was any problems with hard, stubborn acne, since he's a teenager, see, I didn't want to get rid of the beauty spot there, but I can go to the spot healing brush and again, tell it to do content aware and sample all layers. And you can just brush over any blemish on the skin that you need to touch up if you need to take anything out. There you go. So you can really do those final touch-ups there on the final image when you get ready to be done with it. There you go, for some advanced touch-up. And again, it's all on its own layer. So you can completely control that. Okay, what do you guys think? <laughs> We're gonna do some more, but does that make sense? You guys see how powerful these tools are? Cool. All right, let's do another type of image example and open some up. So to start, let's do a nice simple one here with color and tone. So one of my favorite adjustments in Photoshop is the select color range command. Uh, it's very flexible. And what's cool about it is you can click to make a selection. And if you tell it to use localized color clusters, then you can shift click and basically add to that selection by clicking and dragging through like such. And then adjust the fuzziness and the range, right? Which is pretty cool. Click OK, and you've got a selection. Now you can use that selection. Hey, go ahead and darken the water or change the vibrance of the water. Cool. Select, reselect. Go ahead and darken the water a little bit. Good. Select, reselect, select, inverse. Go ahead and apply a curve. Grab the on image tool, click on your photograph, and you could adjust the curve point there very easily for the image. See, it automatically adds the point at the right point. So that made it super simple to do a very precise curves adjustment on the rock. And here's a cool little trick. 
layer, new layer, alt or option key, merge visible, puts a flattened copy on top, filter, convert for smart filters. And now you can use camera raw as a smart filter. So you can use camera raw here like before and say, oh, go ahead and select the subject. Cool. I need to do some extra sharpening there. So let's add some texture and clarity to that rock. Cool. A little bit of sharpness. Good. And that really brings that out nicely. Cool. And then I'll click OK, and it applies. And you see, you can use Camera Raw as a filter on the photo. Same thing. I can keep going. Filter. Radiant, radiant photo. Let it analyze the scene here and dial that in. Now, in this case, I'm not going to use Pro. I'm going to use Subtle because it's already been pre edited. So, Pro is going to overdo it if you run that. And where did it go? <laughs> it pushed it off the screen. One second. I was in full screen mode. There it is. And uh, let's back that off there. Good. Good. I'm just going to turn off that second pass of sharpness because I don't need it. But I am going to bring out the depth and definition. There we go. A little bit of diffused light. Nice. Apply. And so where I started, where I ended up. So I just want you to see that those selections can be very powerful. And then you can use Radiant and Camera Raw as finishing filters to add that polishing pass as you get towards the end of the image there. See, it's really quite awesome. Plus with color range command, select, you can do some pretty cool things. Select color range. And I could say, oh, don't localize, but let me click on the green here. And let me tone that down a little bit. Awesome. And now, I'll feather that. And that softens that selection. So now I selected the green in the water, making it really easy to target that green for further editing. See? Making it more or less dynamic. So you can do some really cool things like that. Cool. How are you guys holding up? Is this making sense? Let me know in the chat how you guys are doing. So let's do some more selections here. And I think we can do something pretty simple that's still quite powerful. Let's do more with the refine edge command. Ah, this is a good one. Let's do this. Grow and smooth. So here we go. 2B. Let's open up that. All right, so this is one of those examples where it's difficult to draw focus to the subject. And that's because we have so much saturation in the green that it's distracting me. So here's what I'm gonna do first off. Select color range, but I'm gonna tell it to select the highlights first. Now it selects the highlights, and I could adjust the range here to be more or less tolerant. Cool. Now what I want to do is tone that down a little bit. So I'm going to use curves here and just tone down that midpoint a little bit in the highlights. Cool. Now select, reselect. Select inverse exposure. And I could darken the rest of the picture a bit. Cool. That's improving the separation there. Now, what I want to do is make another selection. Select color range. And I'll click on some of these green leaves. There we go. 
and I'll just say sampled color, click. And this allows you to choose some of the colors that you want to target. See? That lets you really dial that in to target those greens. And I can click OK. And it will make that basic selection, which is pretty cool. So let's just make a new, I'll select the original layer here and say select color range. There's my greens. Click OK. And now I'll add a vibrance adjustment and just tone down those greens a bit so they're not so over the top. Or select, reselect, exposure. And again, just tone down those greens so they're not pulling your eye away from the subject. Now you start to get in the business. I like where that's going. I'll make a new layer and option or alt merge visible creates the flattened copy. Convert for smart filters. And I'm going to run radiant first. This is going to allow me to really bring out the texture and get a natural green. So it identified it as animals. I'm going to take the exposure down a little. Bump up the contrast there. There we go. But really diffuse the light. And I'm going to tone down the strength adjustment here so it doesn't affect the exposure as much. I just want to work on detail and color. So you can see there, by using zero on the strength, I'm not affecting exposure. I'm just affecting the fidelity of the color. The light diffusion is nice, and the contrast helps. So that's really improving the dynamic range. Now some depth here with definition, and we're getting really great separation. Put a little bit of fidelity in. And as I adjust this here, there's standard. That's the best choice here. So it's really giving me a natural green and preventing the greens from being overdone. Good. A little bit of sharpening is fine. Graduated filter. And in this case, I'll dial that in. Get the right shape. Dial in the size. Feather it. Rotate it to match my subject. There we go. And dial that in. I'm not going to go quite as dark, so I'll bump up the exposure slightly. But I want to separately control the highlights and tone those down more in the outside edge of the gradient. And while I'm at it, I'm going to tone down the saturation too, so that as the vignette moves away from the subject, we don't just get darker, but the color values decrease. There we go. So you can see that nice shift there. How we can separately adjust that with full control on the outside edge of the gradient, which is a lot of fun. So that's a really precise lighting adjustment. Cool. Click apply. And it sends it back when I've got my photo. So I hope you see there how, as a finishing tool, using Radiant, gradient, uh, radiant Photo there to add the gradient filter, add the graduated masking, and really do a nice lighting adjustment around the subject brings them out quite detailed. So this way, we went from being distracted by everything being overwhelming about the picture, so much color, so much texture, to a more targeted adjustment where we really know what to focus on and our eye is drawn to the subject we care about, okay? So that select color range is pretty awesome tool, okay? You can really do a lot with it, and it's quite powerful. Okay, let's do one more thing here, and then we'll see if we've got time for open questions, and then we'll go on to our last topic. Uh, let's do advanced controls. So when you have a photo in Photoshop, remember, you can always use the smart filter 
and then apply camera raw as a filter. That's gonna give you access to use those people masks. There's the person. So you can now target things like just the hair. So I could, for example, increase the highlights in her hair while taking the black point down a little bit and tweak the contrast. And look at how it's just affecting the hair. If I use the fine adjustments here, I can roll that one way or the other to make it blonder or a little bit redder and really just target the hair very precisely. Now, let's make another mask. Again, with the person. And I'm gonna go with the face. That's good. And the lips. And click Create. Now, I'm gonna be lazy for a second. I've got that selected. And let's just bring up the exposure brighten up the face with a little bit of light, but then take the highlights the opposite direction. So as I brighten exposure, I'm doing a highlights recovery the other way to prevent that area from blowing out in the skin tone. I suggest you turn clipping indicators on here and pay attention. Like you see, we have a little bit of clipping there on the nose. So I need to be careful not to lose that. And so just pulling down the white point brought it back. Cool. Let's go ahead and add and choose the person. And this time we'll do the uh, scalea and the iris. Click create and brighten those just a little bit. There we go. And a little more saturation. Cool. And I like where that's going. So now let's click okay. And you'll see that we were able to use those filters to really adjust the picture. Now let's use select subject and it will attempt to find the person. Not bad. If you choose, uh, if you choose refine selection or select and mask, you can really see what it's doing and judge it. There's two types, color aware and object aware. If you've got an object, make sure you choose object aware as opposed to just color. Then the edge detection is gonna do a lot better as it analyzes a person or a clear subject. And you see it did a nice job selecting the hair. Now what I'm gonna do is a little tricky. I'm gonna come down here and say output selection to and choose new layer with layer mask and tell it to decontaminate the background colors. What that does is cut it out to its own layer, which is pretty cool. This is great because now on this layer, you can either above it or on the layer itself, make other adjustments. For example, I could darken down the exposure a bit. And where there's things like hair here in the background showing through, you could just zoom in because it's a mask and grab your paintbrush. In this case, here's the mask. And what I'm gonna do is paint with gray. And so that just makes that part of the mask partially see-through. And so you're painting through to the layers below. So if you have an area where there's like a harsh transition like that, you could just brush and mix the two together like so and mix those, right? See, nice soft brush and just blend that. And there you go. Does that make sense to everyone? Cool. Hope you guys are finding these selection commands fun. Now I wanna show you that these same things do exist in Lightroom. So if you're in Lightroom, you do have these same adjustments inside of Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. So the user interface is a little bit different, but they're still there. So for example, let's open this up. If I go into the develop module, 
you see you have a masking tool here. So now it's very similar to the UI you saw before. Select sky. Thinks, grabs it, and you can adjust. There we go. Dial in the texture of the sky there to really bring those clouds out. Now here's the challenge. You'll see that that creates a glow around the edge, which you would think you couldn't get around, but I'm gonna show you how to get around that. So that's pretty good. Put a little more saturation in the sky. Nice. Now don't overdo it or it'll posterize, but that really brought the sky out. Then come to the mask and say, duplicate and invert. Because now what you can do is on the mask, you can go in and dehaze the edge of the mask and finesse that a little bit. So there we go. Let's make sure I'm on the mask. Yep, good. And let's adjust. Why is that doing that? That's supposed to be doing this. Let's try that again. Delete. Mask inverted. There we go. All right, so there's our mask. Duplicate and invert. There it is. Cool. So now, why is that doing the whole thing? Hold on. Undo. We're supposed to just be working on just this mask, and instead it's showing me everything. Let me go up top here. Here it is. That's right, because I have to use this one. So now, if I adjust that, I can control that a little bit. And if I dehaze that mask, see how that affects the transition point at the edge? So a little bit of dehazing. And separately, you can control that with highlights and shadows. And you can use that to expand or contract a bit. So this can be useful as you're adjusting to eliminate that. And then you can always select that and say add and grab a brush, and then look at your brush here, get the size right, and take the flow and the density way down with a little bit of feathering. So now what you can do is that's gonna come out not too strong. You can brush over that edge if needed to add to it. And that allows you to make a little bit of a change or an improvement on there to expand the mask with your brush. So you can just build that up as needed by adding or subtracting. So I'll say subtract, there we go. So you can brush along the edge line there and clean up and just build up your strokes. Cool. And then once you've got it in the ballpark, feel free to leave the masking tools and just work with what's there. So now you are free to develop the image as a whole and really refine that as needed and bring that texture to life. There we go. See, was able to do quite a bit to uh, enhance that and bring it back. Okay. Uh, blend if, yes, that's good. That's another good option. Uh, Ken, clearly, Ken, you use masks and adjustment layers. I'm impressed. So blend if is an advanced option in Photoshop uh, that you can access under the advanced blending modes. And that'll allow you to tweak that a little bit too. So let's do one more here in Lightroom. Let me find something with a different type of subject. We'll go back to the library here. Tokyo, good, good. And so what I can do here is identify a picture that I wanna work with, target it. Go to your selections under develop and use that mask to say things like, go ahead and choose a range of luminosity. And then you define that range. And so as you adjust these sliders here, 
you're controlling what's being selected. In this case, the bright areas. And then you can drag this out to create a bit of a feather zone here. So there's a transition point. So the inner box is the actual target. And then this triangle is the feathered blending. So there I targeted just the brightest areas, allowing me to recover those a little bit and really play with the white point as well as things like texture and clarity just to bring those back a bit. And so you can do some pretty cool things there. Plus notice here, there is an amount slider. This lets you globally increase or decrease the whole effect so you don't have to start over. So if it's a little too strong, you could back that off and blend it nicely. Now create a new mask. This time do a select background, let it think, and then I'm just gonna inverse it. And now it's selected everything else. See, and you can adjust that and refine. So this will let you really dial that in nicely. Or let's do one more. Select color range. And this allows you to actually select a color like I did the green there. And then you are free to just target that like such. Use the fine adjustments and you can really target the color there nicely. See, hope that makes sense. Then if you want to do Photoshop work, here's the thing, photo, open in, open as smart object in Photoshop. This will send it from Lightroom into Photoshop as a smart object. You're now free to use the different tools that we covered earlier today. For example, if you wanted to do more camera raw, although we just did camera raw, you can continue to do it. Or if you wanted to apply radiant photo non-destructively, you can do that. Let it analyze the image, make some of those adjustments. I'm gonna diffuse the light, increase contrast, take the color adjustments down and the AI exposure down a little bit, not bad. Let's get the color more accurate in the greens. There we go, take the vibrancy down. A little bit of contrast. Good. And not bad. I don't think we need the sharpness. Good. And under foliage toning, I'm gonna bring out the golds a little bit there and the browns. Good. Good. Troll that up. This time I'm gonna do a heavier vignette, but place the center over there on the object and blend it a bit. Good, and apply. It updates and sends it. There we go. When you're all done, close and save. And Lightroom Classic will pick that up and adds the file right there in your library next to the original. So you'll end up with your uh, Photoshop file stacked right next to the original in case you ever needed it. So that's an easy way to use third-party filters or advanced Photoshop options jumping back and forth very cleanly. So if you're in Lightroom and you say, hey, let's go ahead and open this. And let me open that in Photoshop. Uh, sorry, edit in Photoshop as a smart object. There we go. It connects. And now I can use tools. For example, maybe I want to apply sky replacement. Uh, Photoshop has its own sky replacement. It's not as good as Luminar's. 
Uh, so maybe I go in here and I do a little bit of uh, updating the sky. Let it analyze and mask. What I like is that we have a reflection in that layer down here that actually is going to add that into the water a bit. There we go. And good. Let's adjust the scene. So it picks up the color. And as I change that, you can see how different ones are swapped in. There we go. Let's go there. And those clouds are way too crisp. So I'm just going to defocus them a little bit. There we go. Click apply. Sends it back. Updates. And then you can continue to work. And when you're all done and you close and save, it will transfer right back to Lightroom and get nestled in with your stuff. So I'm just gonna tone this down a little bit here. That's good. And let's diffuse the light. Might turn off exposure adjustment. Here we go, just the AI exposure is helping nicely in the shadows. Let's add some depth and improve the definition. Good, good. Under color, fidelity, check my blues. Yep. Those are now natural. The sky is not overly saturated, so it took it to a natural blue. Good. It says there's tint. I'll run that. Yep, it cleaned it up, so now the whites don't have the blue color cast anymore. Good. I don't need any foliage toning. I'm going to take that off. And this time, I'm going to do a uh, waterfront gradient, and this lets me adjust. So let me place the center. Good right there. And this lets me create the transition zone. So what I'm going to do here is adjust here for a second. And that part's good. So on the top, I'm going to make this feathered in a second. I'm just going to darken it a little bit, slight darkening, but not boost the color so much. So let's take Color temperature off, good, and that helps. Let's look at the bottom, and that part's good. Little darkening, and I actually do like a little bit of blue being added to that water. Good, good, and now I could just feather that to create that smooth blend between top and bottom, and with a single slider here, I can dial in the strength of that graduated filter. And what I was able to do there was color grade the top of the photo, color grade the bottom of the photo and create a smooth blend in the inside here. And it's really cool. And by the way, if you ever need to, if you close this, you have a master blend slider here that lets you back off the effect before you close it. So if you feel like it's a little overdone, you can back that off and then click apply and it will send and update those results. There we go. So close, save, and it drops it back into Lightroom next to the original. So there's the edit, there's the original. Definitely an improvement. <laughs> Was able to do quite a bit to that. Now, ethics of sky replacement aside, I'll leave that to you if you wanna do sky replacement or not, but uh, does some pretty cool things. All right, we're going to switch to Aftershoot next, which is going to show you a way to use artificial intelligence to call photos. We're going to go for about 30 more minutes. Uh, but if you guys have any questions about Photoshop or Lightroom before I leave, go ahead and uh, put them into the Q&A or the chat, and I'll tackle them really quick. I hope you guys see that these selection tools are really quite powerful, and uh, you can make them really nice and easy right inside of Lightroom. So as you're working with that picture, uh, it is not hard in the develop module here to, to jump right in and just take a look at that image and to do things with the mask tool and say, select the sky. Let it analyze and find the sky, dial that in, 
pop the white point there a little bit, pull down the highlights. Cool. A little bit of texture there and clarity to bring out the clouds. And you got it. Add another mask. And this time I'm going to say select subject and let it analyze. It picked the boats. Good. And what I could do now is sharpen that subject a little bit and put a little bit more texture and clarity in just to really bring those boats out. There we go. Nice. So I hope you see that these are really great tools to help you target the adjustments inside of an image.